This is lesson 36, and we'll be discussing half steps and whole steps. We have learned about sharps and flats. For example, looking at the treble or G clef, we could write a C, and then we could write another C with a sharp sign in front of it. We place that sharp sign right in the space in front of the C. And now instead of just having a C, we'll have a C sharp. Remember that we write the letter name first and then the sharp sign, just like we speak it C sharp when we write it with English letters. But if we write it on the staff, we actually write sharp C. Remember that this sharp sign in front of the C will have the effect of making the C, the normal C, just a little bit higher, and that little bit we learned is called a half step. So this C sharp would be a half step higher than this C. We also learned about flat signs and that a flat is a way we can lower a pitch. So for example, let's take a B in the bass or F clef, and we're going to put a flat, almost looks like a little bit of a sloped lowercase b, in front of the next b we draw. This first b will be a b, and this next b will be a b flat. Again, notice that when we write it on the staff, we actually write flat b. And this b flat will be a little bit lower or a half step lower than this b. And now let's see where that would fall on the keyboard. So for the treble clef, we have the C that is on the staff, right in the middle of the staff on space three. And here's our middle C, the white key directly to the left of these two black keys that are right in the middle of the keyboard. So here's our middle C. And this C is actually going to be one octave above. So this will be our C as represented on the staff. And then recall that our sharp will make the note higher, so we'll be heading to the right of the keyboard, and we know we need the next closest key, which will be the black key in this case. That is the next closest key to this C. So here's our C, and then our C sharp. Here's our C, and then our C sharp. And now let's look at our bass clef example. So we have a B and a B flat, and this B and B flat are actually significantly below our middle C. So here's our middle C. And then our next C would be in the middle of the bass clef staff. That would be over here. And this is actually below that. So it's going to be right here. This will be our B. And then in order to flatten the pitch, we'll have to head to the left of the keyboard to make the pitch lower. Our closest key to the left will be this black key. So this is our B. And then this is our B flat. One more time, here's our B, and then our B flat. Half steps are often easier to understand and visualize when we look at a piano keyboard. The concept becomes more concrete and less abstract. So remember that on a keyboard, our half steps will always be our closest together keys. So let's look at a few examples. So for example, if I start with a D, here's my C, here's my D, and I wanna make that pitch just a little bit or a half step higher, I would find my next closest key to the right. And in this case, it's not the white key, it's actually the black key because that's inset into this white key. So it's the very closest key. Here's my D, here's my D sharp. And then returning to my D, what if I wanted to make that pitch just a little bit or a half step lower? Well, I would play the next closest key to the left of this white key. So here it is, my black key. Here's my D. Here's a little bit lower to a D flat. Right there. Let's try another one. So remember, I could play my C. And if I wanted to make it just a little bit higher, a half step higher, I could play a C sharp, and that would be right here, C sharp. Remember that this key, i.e. this pitch, has two different names. We could call it a C sharp, 
or we could call it a D flat. We also learned about the two spots on the keyboard where there is no black key between the white keys. So right here between B and C, and right here between B and F. And so sharps and flats are not necessarily found only on the black keys of the piano. If we take an F, for example, and we want to play an F flat, so a half step lower than an F, we would find the next closest key to the left, and that would actually be this white key. So there's our F flat. We also label that as E, right? So here's our F, and here's our F flat. We could look at our B over here, and if I wanted to play a half step higher than my B, I would want to play a B sharp, and that would be the same key that we often just label as C. So here's our B, and here's our B sharp. So the question might have already arisen in your mind, if there's something called a half step, is there also something called a whole step? And yes, there is. So as the name implies, a whole step is made up of two half steps. So again, returning to the keyboard because it's such a helpful way to understand this concept, let's find some half steps and some whole steps. So starting on our C, a half step higher would be C sharp. So the first key to the right will be a C sharp, and that's a half step higher than a C. Now, what if I wanted to go a whole step higher than the C? Well, I'd have to go two half steps. So if this white key to the next closest key is a half step, then this black key to the next closest key to the right is another half step. So from here to here is a half step, and from here to here is a half step. Therefore, a half plus a half from C to D is a whole step. Listen to the difference. This is a half step. This is a whole step. Okay, so a half step is just a little bit higher than a C. And then a whole step to a D is a little bit bigger than that. We're still dealing with stepwise motion, but one of these steps is smaller and one of them is bigger. Let's look at another example. E to F is a half step because there's no other key in between. So E to F is a half step. If I wanted to go a whole step higher than E, I would need to have two half steps up from E. So here's E to F is a half step. F to F sharp would be another half step. Let's just cover that span. E to F sharp is a whole step. Listen again, E to F is a half step, E to F sharp is a whole step. Let's go in the other direction now. So starting on an A, if I want to play a half step lower, I would need the next closest key to the left of this key I'm playing, which would be this flat key. Here's an A, here's an A flat. It's a half step lower. If I want to play a whole step lower than this A, I have to cover the span of two half steps. So from this white key to this black key would be a half step. And from this black key to this white key would be the next half step. So from here to here is a whole step. A to G is a whole step lower. So here's an A, here's a half step lower to an A flat. Here's an A, here's a whole step lower to a G. One more example, starting on a C. A half step lower would be to a B or a C flat. We can call it whichever we want. C, let's say to a B. In order to go a whole step lower, I would have to use this half step plus one more half step. So I'm going to need this key over here. So C to B flat would be a whole step. So C to B, half step, C to B flat step and again both of those are stepwise motion one is just a smaller step and one is a bigger step a half step and a whole step just a note that another very common term for half step is semitone and another common name for a whole step is 
whole tone. So just know those terms are often used interchangeably, semitone and half step, and then whole tone and whole step. If any of this seems overwhelming, please know you do not need to have a thorough understanding of this concept in order to be able to read music, nor do you need to continuously be analyzing and making notes of whole and half steps as you're reading music. That said, the reason I introduced this concept is because it can be very helpful for some instrumentalists, particularly guitarists and bassists or any other string players, as well as vocalists to have a working knowledge of this concept. For string players, it can help us to know whether to put our fingers close together or far apart. So for a half step, we'll have fingers that are close together, for a whole step, we'll have fingers that are farther apart. For vocalists, there are going to be times when it is helpful to understand whether a pitch that you're seeking is just a little bit higher, a half step higher, or if it's a whole tone higher, similarly lower. So just a little bit lower, or is it a whole step lower? Sometimes it's very intuitive and obvious to recognize a half step as a string player and as a vocalist, even if you're very new to music re reading, because if you see a C right next to a C sharp, your brain pretty quickly figures out that means just a little bit higher. In other cases, it can be less intuitive. For example, when you sing an E stepping up to an F, we might not intuitively know that those notes are actually close together. If you have a basic understanding of the keyboard and you know that E and F are the keys where there is no black key between them, it can help us to understand that. So let's just quickly look at two examples. We're going to start here in the treble clef with a B followed by a C. And let's say I want to know if those pitches are a half step or a whole step apart. If they're just, if the C is just a little bit higher than the B or a whole step higher than the B. So I'll just go over here to my keyboard and I'm finding the B that's above middle C. Here's my middle C. Here's my B, and then I know this is my C. Okay, and we can see there's no key between them, so we know that's a half step. So we're going to make sure that we sing or play that C just a little bit higher than this B. Looking at another example, we have an F sharp and a G sharp. And these are both just above middle C. So let's return to our keyboard. Here's our C, D, E, F. So our F sharp would be a half step higher. Here it is. And then we need a G sharp. Well, here's our G, the white key. We need a half step higher. Here's our G sharp. So it's another black key. So we have F sharp, G sharp. Well, from our F sharp, the next white key would be a half step and from this white key the G to the G sharp is another half step so that means I've covered two half steps two half steps make a whole step so from the F sharp to the G sharp is a whole step or a whole tone